So if you want to start looking pretty now, go ahead, but you're good with me because I am a mess today. Oh, went to the gym and all kinds of fun stuff and watching kiddos and it's all good. But let's start us off in prayer really quick because, I mean, you can't do the Circle Maker book without prayer, right? So let's do it. All right, dear God, we'd like to come to you tonight and just pray that um, with this book study that we truly are putting um, into motion the things that we're learning and not just setting it aside. We, I pray that um, we have an open mind tonight, that we share and we just uh, love on one another. Lord, thank you for uh, being with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Okay. Okay, hey, I'm going to mute you guys for a minute, just because there's lots of echoes and, and uh, background noise. I know that I'm probably going to have background noise too, um, but all is good. Okay, so how, raise your hand if this book keeps getting better for you. Oh my goodness, for real. Some of y'all I can't see, so I'm hoping you, you, you're raising your hand in the background. But wow, like I really didn't, I did not think, I mean, I, I, I guess I should think that this book was going to get better, but I didn't realize like how much it was going to impact me. Like, wow. I, again, I was highlighting like crazy. And I even, when I was wrapped up in my car, I, I did a live on my Facebook or my um, team page because I was like, my team needs to know about this that is not doing this book study because it is just powerful. Some of the words that, you know, I was, you know, listening to and reading. Um, so some of you guys, what I've been doing is posting our questions in the group. So I'm hoping you guys are, are loving on that and, and writing some notes because we're going to go over some stuff today, um, about that. Um, so our first one for, ch for chapter six, we're going to start there. Um, it says, having vision beyond your resources is synonymous with dreaming big. Are your dreams that big? Are your dreams for you, for the, for you or for the kingdom? Ah, that was, that's definitely something because I still struggle with um, praying boldly in some aspects because I feel like I'm still being selfish. So I'm trying to, this book is just changing me in so many ways that like, no, I can still pray for the things that I want, but I have to make sure it's not what Cassie wants. It's what God wants for me. And it's the things that are for his kingdom and not just like, Oh, I want to, I want to go to Hawaii and I want, you know, it's not selfish things. It's, it's things that can better and, and help, help this world. I mean, this world is falling apart y'all. And if y'all aren't seeing it, it's falling apart. Um, but that's something that I struggle with because I want to make sure that my, my dreams are true to his and not just my selfish ones. So I want to hear you guys, um, on that one too. And if you have anything like unmute yourself, if you can't like type in the chat, if you can't unmute yourself, but, um, and we also have the chat. So if, if we're talking to you, come up with something, make sure you write it in the chat. And the other thing is don't ever feel like your word is not valued here because, I know sometimes in, when I'm in a big group setting like this, I'm like, oh, I don't want to speak. That person can just speak better than I can. And don't ever feel that way. I want this group to be open and honest and just love on each other. And so if you have something, please, if it comes to you, shout it out. Um, so unmute yourself now if you have, if, you know, this question was, are your dreams that big and are your dreams for you or the kingdom? And what, what comes to mind when you're, when you're thinking about that? Anybody? Dun, dun, dun. I think what comes to my mind when I think about that is how to distinguish if they're my dreams or for the kingdom's dreams. Because I think I think I can pretty well twist any of my dreams in the kingdom dreams, even if they're not. And so, but then I'm like, am I twisting this or is it real? So I kind of go in that loop. <laughs> So, so how can, so how can you, um, distinguish the difference? You know what I mean? Like what, what could be that one thing that you're like, no, this is for him. Like, how would you know? I mean, I guess that's the big question. There are times where I'm like, okay, this was too obvious, too real, too hard. Those tend to be the times when there's major sacrifices involved. 
And so it's harder to distinguish when his plan also aligns with big blessings, I think, for me. Mm -hmm. I think for me, when I have to realize, I mean, we get into this later too, but like God obviously put things in my path for a reason. And if these, if these paths keep coming up, then really it has to be for his kingdom. It can't be just for me. So I just allow things to happen in that aspect. I hope I really didn't just freeze on you guys. Did I just freeze or no? Am I good? Okay. So FYI. For a second. Okay. Well, Kasha, you can let them know if something happens, but I live out in the boonies. <laughs> sometimes goes in and out. And I notice, like when everybody froze, I'm like, oh, please. No, not tonight. Oh, so if that happens, that's why. And I usually come back from, from the dead. I do. It just takes a minute. So, um, but I think that's what, how I try to remember how I come back, you know, in reality, like, no, this is his will. I mean, if, if it wasn't, things would not be coming up all the time, um, in this business and really just anything that, that happens in my life. So I hope that helps you. And maybe you can remember that, like, if he keeps throwing things at you, like little stones, catch them and realize like, Hey, this is, this is what he's wanting or things wouldn't just keep popping up like this. Um, anybody else? So my husband and I have always had, um, a dream that whenever we are out to eat anywhere, that if any person in uniform, whether it's military or, um, or like police officers, firemen, anybody like that is there eating at the restaurant that we would be able to pay for their meal. And that's something that we have talked about ever since we first started dating and we were sitting next to a table full of soldiers. And that's something that just keeps, as, as I think about what my dreams are for my Plexus business, that's one of the, the huge dreams that I have for whenever um, we get further down the line is the ability to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, I, I want success in this business and I want to do well and I want to earn a lot in this business, but you know, I can, I feel better about being able to pray for that because I know that those are the types of things that I'm going to be able to do with that money. Yeah. Your intentions are well, they're not self serving. They're trying to serve others. And that's, what's huge. That's the difference right there. It wasn't until I really, I really sat down and thought and made myself think about, okay, how am I going to bless other people through my success in this business that I really allowed myself to be able to pray that he would bless my business. You know, it, it did feel selfish until I, I forced myself to th sit down and think about that and make plans and dreams of how to bless others with it. Yeah. I think that's the difference right there when you're actually distinguishing what you're going to do, you know, not just, Oh, I'm going to like, for me, you know, a big one would be to pay our house, but to pay our house, we're able to then financially, if somebody needs a car, you know, we can find an older, I mean, we have, we have older cars. We can maybe give them a car. I mean, Lorelai just did that. I want, I want to be that person. I want to be like, I see somebody struggling that I know, or I, I know mutual friends with, and I, I'm able to help them because of the blessings of this business. Um, and I have to say that that dream of yours is awesome because Jason and I, we've had that happen at least twice. Um, we are prior military and just recently my dad was with us and he was prior military and we were out floating and he just had his hat on. He has a retired, you know, a veteran hat that you see, you know, probably lots of older, older guys wearing and my dad wears his proud and we unknowingly, our waitress said somebody paid for your, all of your meal and we had no clue who they just walked out. And I think those are the best when you, you know, anonymously that you're just like, you want you, it makes you want to pay it forward. And like that day, because you just feel yeah. so good about it. So love that dream. I think that that's a great one to have. And I feel like you guys, you know, in this business, continue to think of those little things that you can do, you know, out, you know, for his, for him, you know, and not just for, for what we want. Um, and little things like that.
I think make a huge difference. Anybody else before we move on? Anything come to mind? Okay. Um, so I, I highlighted a couple things in chapter six. So I want to go over those because our call at 1230 today was just so good. And I really hope that you guys open up like that one. It was just, it was powerful when we are all sharing. So I want to hear you guys. Um, but on the bottom of 62, it says vision beyond your resources. And I think that that's something I need to do a better job at. It's like, I want to vision the big dream, not just the here and now. I want to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm visioning beyond my resources. Like, Lord, I don't have this, but I know that with you, I can potentially have it. Um, and I really liked that. It also said that um, that left brain approach is a brain approach because it's based on our limited resources rather than God's unlimited provision. Faith is allowing your God-given vision to determine your budget. And then 63 on in the middle, it says, and it may feel like you're setting yourself up for failure, but you're actually setting God up for a miracle. How God performs the miracle is his job. Your job is drawing a circle around the God-given dream. Did y'all highlight that like I did? Because I mean, I starred that. I started all of that. I feel like with me, it's the, kind of the same thing. Like we almost stop, stop our dreams too soon before they can happen because we think, Oh, that's, that, that won't happen with me. You know, there's no way I, I'm not going to have those resources like Billy Joe or Susie Q or whoever. Um, we, we put, and we get into that here in a little bit, but we put a period before God, he already put the comma in there for us, you know? And I, I, I want to frame that like right here in my basement once it's done. Like, just there's so many statements that I really want to like um, use my graphic design degree and just make a huge poster of everything I've highlighted in here, like the big ones like that. And just remember, you know, every day that, you know, he's so good and he just reminds us that we need to stop putting doubts on ourselves and, and um, dreams. I mean, we need to dream big. Um, what stood out to you guys in chapter six? I'm just going to open it up really quick because there's several, I mean, this next page is all highlighted. So I want to hear from you guys. Was there anything in chapter six that stood out to you? I don't know if y'all, I got cut off for a second, but so stop me if someone else said this, but exactly what you were saying before about, um, having a vision beyond resources for me, that's not necessary. It's not financial for me. It's like, Oh, I don't have those skills that come automatically that, you know, Carissa does or Jessica or, you know, or she's so much more outgoing than I am. You know, I, I, I'm just, I don't have that talent. You know, it's not, you know, God wants us to use the talents that he gave us mm -hmm. so he can make miracles happen <laughs> and do things that, you know, have us do things that we never thought that were possible in the first place. So that's how that spoke out to me. Yeah. And I think that that's so true. I mean, I, I, I mean, I struggle with that all the time, all the time. And I feel like, I mean, girls, I, girls, I hope, and guys, maybe there's guys on here, but, um, the, the one where it says, you know, he, he doesn't qual, he doesn't call the qualified, you know, he calls the called or I know I'm saying that wrong, but you know what I mean? We'll get to it. But it's so true. Cause like, if God is going, he, he's going to keep us going and he's not just going to just let us drop off. I know in this, I would have been truly comfortable where I was at. I did not anticipate this business. I didn't anticipate leading a huge group, having a huge team. I didn't anticipate any of that, but God called it. And I think that we have to, we have to nurture our gifts and realize what our gifts are. And that's like with you, um, Lauren, you have to figure out like what, what makes you special that God created you for? You know, it's not a, it's not a Carissa. It's not a McKenna. It's a Lauren. You know, what is, what is good about Lauren that is going to make everybody else jealous that like, Oh, I wish I was Lauren because she's just so sweet. And I mean, there's something special about you that other people are going to be jealous about too. So think, think about that when you're visioning your resources, like what can I do? What can Lauren do to just make it even better and make those resources happen and those visions happen. Um, I think all of us need, to, I mean, that's a struggle that I have all the time. Like, 
man, Jana's really good with words and Jana's this and that. And I still struggle with that. And I have to realize like, no, but I'm Cassie and I, I'm good with people and I'm good with da 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 da, you know? And I have to remember that I have to push those strengths and, and put values on those and not my weaknesses as much. Yes, I need to grow my weaknesses and I have because one, girls, I don't read books at all. I haven't until Plexus. Like, I am loving books now, but it's something that God is definitely calling me to, to, to get better at. So it's not that I'm, I'm forgetting about my weaknesses. I'm trying to gradually grow them a little bit. Um, okay. What else stood out to you guys in chapter six? Anything? It's so good. I think what stood out to me on page um, 65, where it mm -hmm. says at the top, if you seek answers, you won't find them. But if you seek God, the answers will find you. Yes. Oh, I highlighted that one too. Love that. Mm -hmm. And I liked below it, it says, but I stopped trying to manufacture my own answer and simply trusted that God would give an answer when I was ready for it. Right. Ah. That stepped on my toes so much because I am the ultimate control freak and manufacturer of answers. So bad. Oh my goodness. And instead of trusting God and waiting for him, I think that he's, he's like, I don't know. I just make it up. I was like, I make it up and I don't wait for God's answer. And then a lot of times I get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, and it later on, and I don't know where, but it talks about microwaving it. Like we pretty much want to microwave. We want to get it done. Like, come on, let's new. Yeah. I can't wait any, any longer. And that is me. That's so true. I mean, I think a lot of us it, struggle with that. And I think the fact that we, once we identify it and realize it, that's the difference, you know, not just letting it go. Um, yeah and growing on that because I know I struggle with that too. I'm like, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty patient, but there's some things I'm not patient about. I want that thing to microwave and I want it, my hot chocolate done in two seconds, not two minutes. And same with, same with our dreams. I mean, a lot of us probably here are struggling to hit silver, hit gold, things like this that are like, but so-and-so did it in two months or so-and-so did it in two days. We want it nuked. We want it now. And we have to realize like that's not God's path for us. You know, me, Cassie, my, my, my journey is different than Carissa or McKenna or anybody else on this team. Um, and we just have to love on that and know that we have to grow inside of our journey and, um, and, and appreciate it because that's what makes it all unique in this business. Um, okay. Um, Kasha, the other thing that was on 64, it says, when God doesn't answer our prayer right away, we try to answer it for him, just like you said. And then, but when we try to do God's job for him, it always backfires. Trying to get ahead of God cost Moses 40 years. And then it goes on. Um, and that, at the bottom, it says, sometimes no means not yet. We're too quick to give up on God when he doesn't answer our prayers. When we want to, when, when we want or how we want. Maybe your deadline doesn't fit God's timeline. Maybe, maybe no simply means not yet. Maybe it's a divine delay. So that whole thing about it costing Moses 40 years, it cost Moses so much more than that because it cost Moses the promised land. He yeah. wasn't able to go. He did all of the work of getting the Israelites out of Egypt, wandering around for umpteen years to get to the promised land all the famines and all of the heartaches and all of the things that Moses endured to get them to the promised land and because of that decision he was not able to get to be in the promised land he was not able to to go there I mean it it, it cost him 40 years wandering around in the desert but it also cost him the promised land the whole prize the whole point of what he was doing so I mean, it can be devastating to us and to our goals and our dreams whenever we get ahead of God. So exactly. it could cost us the whole big picture. Mm -hmm. 
especially when, when we're, we're so self-serving that we forget about others. Like I try to have my team and some of you guys are on here. Our thing is connecting. Like I really want us to be a family. And I think that if we lose sight of that, then again, you cost everything, you know, you cost your relationships, you cost your, um, your friendships and everything all in this, what this business is. If you're not, you're not focused on the goal. Um, and just about people. Um, but what else? Let me see. Oh, on 70. So all of us know that in this business, um, we plan, we try to plan, okay, what's our next month going to look like? And if you're not doing this, I highly recommend you to do this. You definitely want to know what your next month's going to look like. You want a board, you want something that you put it on. And when I first started this, I used my bathroom mirror and a dry erase board or a dry erase marker. And I wrote down, this is my why, and this is where I want to be. Um, and you want small, tangible ones and then big, crazy ones. And so in on 70, it talks about planning. And, but the thing is, is you got to plan in the right way. So it says, um, failing to plan is planning to fail. It says one bold prayer can accomplish more than a thousand well laid out prayer or plans. So we want to have good laid out plans, but we want to make sure that he's involved in it too. We can't just, you know, put these plans of awesomeness up here and not think about him as well. Um, and it says on 71 in, in the middle, um, so keep planning like it depends on you, but make sure to make sure you pray like it depends on God. Don't just brainstorm, pray storm. I like highlighted that. I underlined it. I put an arrow. It's so true. I mean, we can plan all day long with what we want, but we have to make sure that we're praying in between that too. And I highly recommend um, with your team, I have a huge board over here with all of my team goals and I pray for my team, not just for me, but for them. And I highly recommend that too, because you, you can't just do this on your own. There's no way you're not going to get anywhere if you do. And you're going to stay stagnant. You're going to stay silver. You're going to stay gold. You're going to stay, you know, an ambassador until you realize like what's, what's the bigger ambassador and which is the one that started this all. Um, what did you guys think about that? Um, Cause we're done with chapter six, unless somebody else has anything else that stood out to them that I didn't highlight. I didn't. Nobody. And again, don't feel like you don't talk. Okay. Well, we'll go to seven. Okay, so chapter seven. How does it make you feel to know that your hardest prayers are still easy for God? Oh, no. Brittany, your mic isn't working. Uh-oh. Well, we have the chat, and I will be your mic for you, unfortunately, if you need help. That's what I'm here for. Um, somebody has some background noise, so hang on. Okay. All right. So unmute yourself um, if you have anything, but there was a lot of static or something. Um, so on seven, it's so on seven. Go ahead. Oh, it says, how does it make you feel to know that your hardest prayers are still easy for God? And it says he shares a story about being prayed for on page 73 and 74 and receiving an answer that wasn't what he expected. Have you ever had an experience like this? Share away. I cannot wait to hear what you guys put for this one. And I know you guys are wanting to. I feel it. Can you repeat the question? I'm really sorry. <laughs> Renee. No, I'm just kidding. I'm so <laughs> You're all right. I left at school, so oh. I'm like trying to remember what I wrote. You're okay. Okay, I'll go over it again. It says, how does it make you feel to know that your hardest 
prayers are still easy for God. And then it talks about mm. his story about, you know, he received an answer that he didn't expect. And have we ever ex experienced something like that? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I remember what I wrote down for this one now. That's why I was like, oh, I feel like I had a good one. See, <laughs> okay, so I'm a school teacher during the day. But I never, ever, ever wanted to be a school teacher. I was not going to be a school teacher. That is, I was not my dream. It fell into my lap, literally, like fell into my lap. So I was subbing for a while, and I didn't even have a teaching degree. I was just subbing, trying to figure out what I was going to take in college next, because I'm a perpetual college student. And uh, and a job position opened up. It was created out of thin air. It wasn't even a job position before. And something told me to go talk to the principal and apply for the job. I didn't have a teaching degree. So I walked into the principal's office and I was like, hey, you posted this job and I think I'm perfect for it. And he said, do you have a teaching degree? And I said, no. And he said, can you get one? And I said, yeah, I can get one. And he said, okay, then apply for the job and we'll talk. And I mean, like the rest is literally history. He gave me the job. I didn't know what I was doing. This was not my prayer. This was not my, like, I did not want this. I didn't think I was good at it. But something said, you're good at this. You need to help these kids. These kids are struggling and you can help them. So I've been doing it eight years and I promise it was a calling. It, I was called, then qualified. I was definitely not qualified when I started. So, or I didn't feel like I was anyway. I think that that's, I mean, that's even what he said. He, he never knew anything about a coffee shop. He, ne he only internshiped. He didn't pastor, you know, before. He had no clue what he was really doing, but he knew that God would provide and he would be the one helping him along the way. And it's so true. I mean, especially in your experience, goodness, like never teaching. And then all of a sudden, like, here, you know what? You actually are a great teacher and I'm going to show you how. Wow. Anybody yeah, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> None of us do. I mean, if you think about it. None of us realize yeah. what our future is going to be until it comes yeah. and we're like oh okay i can be a mom i can be you know yeah. this and that and you don't realize like the things that you could really do in life well and that's where all the planning in the world <clears throat> he's going to blindside you anyway he's going to knock your socks off and say oh by the way you can do this too and you'll be like yeah i don't think so and he'll be like yeah but i do so <laughs> Well, and that's why I tell my team, like, have a goal, but then, like, have a crazy goal, like, one that you're like, this was crazy, you know, mm -hmm. and because you never know. I mean, like you said, he might blindside you and be like, you know what? Guess what? Your goal wasn't that crazy like you thought. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Anybody else have a really cool story that just, I don't know, they wanted to share? Everybody has a story. We all are different. Okay, I'm going to get y'all to open up a little bit more here soon. <laughs> okay, um, because after this, I mean, you're going to, I'm going to have to start shutting up because it gets really good for me and I'm just going to have to let y'all take over a little bit because I, I learned so much in like chapter um, eight and nine and, and 10. It, it was so good. Okay, so we're going to finish with seven. It says on page 81, the story of the persistent widow is shared. What does the scripture teach us about prayer? And how, how have you experienced the truth of this lesson? And then what do you think it means to pray hard? Any of that? I'll say for me on that one, um, last year was a really tough year for us. We had a miscarriage and then an adoption of a set of brothers fell through. And then we found out I was pregnant again. And so, I mean, those nine months, I prayed harder than ever before. And now we have a wonderful seven-month-old who's asleep. And so just, I just was not going to take losing him as an answer. He was going to be healthy, and that is just the way it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, you prayed circles around him, and God listened. God heard you. And I think that that's what, you know, he's trying to tell us in this book, like, especially he's been speaking to me, like, don't just put a period, like keep going, you know, keep praying for it. Cause you know, it's, it's probably that I'm still waiting to see how much you trust me. Ugh. 
Well, I'm too excited. I'm going to keep moving because when we get to eight and nine, we're going to shut the house down. I know it. I mean, it's going to, it's going to be that good. Okay. On eight, it said, would you consider yourself a persistent person? What is one thing you could do to increase your persistence in prayer? Anybody? Probably just not giving up so easy. Like, oh, I guess that's that must not be for me. So you just stop. You don't keep praying for something to come of it or something, maybe some part of it to come now or whatever. It's like an all or nothing thing for us. And it's like, oh, well, guess that wasn't meant to be for me. You know, I didn't win the lottery this week. Well, whatever. And I'm not saying, you know, play the lottery, but I'm just saying we give up too easy. If we don't get what we want, when we want it, we think, uh, well, whatever, I'll find something else, I guess, because that's probably just not in the cards today or this week or this month or this year or whatever. And it could be. But that's where I struggle with, uh, like, persistence with the wrong thing, and I don't know it. So, like, that story about the guy um, who, like, uh, applied for the job for, like, seven years in a row or something or maybe longer. But, like, how do you know when you should keep going and how do you know when you should, like, take a right turn and apply for a different job or maybe that's why, or, or maybe you're supposed to learn something before you can have that job and you just don't know what it is yet or like that's where I struggle with yeah. persistence because then it feels like it's me wanting it and not him wanting it and then I'm like, wait a second, maybe this isn't right for me, maybe I shouldn't want this, but then I'm giving up too easy. So it's like, I don't know. <laughs> well, I think our problem is this. We're, we're in the day and age that we have everything right here, right now that it's really hard for us to be more patient, you know, mm -hmm. and, and to realize, like, like you said, we just have to be persistent and keep praying and realize it's going to come. We just have to, again, be patient and mm -hmm. um, realize that his, his, his dream for us is bigger than we can even think about. Um, and I do, I did highlight some stuff on seven or on chapter seven that I totally forgot about that I am going to go back on because we talked about this at the beginning. So on the end of 78, it said, God doesn't call the qualified. God qualifies the call. And again, I think this is something that is so true with all of us. Like this, probably for all of you, like landed in your lap. You did not anticipate doing a network marketing business or, or leading a team or any of this. Like I know I didn't. And God just keeps calling me. And, you know, I'm listening. That's the thing the difference is we have to listen I'm in the basement and that was just water. Somebody was great. Well, hopefully y'all didn't hear too much of that, but, um, sorry, I'm kind of like a squirrel sometimes, but, um, with the, with the thing, with, with this business, I think that we just have to realize like if God's putting those stones in front of us, what are we going to do with them? Are we going to take them? Are we going to try to be, you know, the called and listen to him? Or are we just going to back away and be like, Nope, you know what? I'm, I can't do it. Can't do it. Um, I think that's the difference. And it says, if God has called you, you're qualified. The issue is never, are you qualified? The issue is always, are you called? And then it said that um, he felt intimidated by the opportunity. It felt too good and it seemed too big. Um, and the other thing was the dream was too big for me, but it's never too big for God. If you want to keep growing spiritually, you need to keep stretching. How? By going after dreams that are bigger than you. Right. I mean, if we don't keep stretching, we're not going to keep growing. I mean, that's just the same with school. You know, we go to school to learn and do we stop? No. So some of us go to college. Some of us, you know, go to and learn a new job because we keep stretching ourselves to learn new things. And I think that that's the beauty of that is that God calls us to do that. We just have to, to not be comfortable and, and realize there's more, there's more to us than that. Um, Hmm, what else? Mm. Um, on, on 81, it says, sometimes the power of prayer is, is the power to carry on. When you pray through, the burden is taken off of your shoulders and put on the shoulders of him who carried you. I put carried you. It says carried the cross to Calvary. Um, 
And I think, again, we, we've already touched on all of that, like just continuing to pray versus just putting a period on it and being done with it. Yeah. Um, I think that we were too quick to, to just stop. And again, me for, for sure. I'm like, well, God, God, if it's your will, you know, you know, a lot of my prayers are, if it's your will, you know, I'm okay with whatever it is, but you know, I just, whatever your will, but if not, this, this would be great, but I understand. And I think we we're, we're limiting him that way. And the fact that, I mean, he's moved, he's moved mountains. He's done miracles. He's done all this. Stuff, so why are we doubting him and putting like, well, if it's your will, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to doubt you. I don't want to, you know, make you. Any that sometimes we use that phrase as a cop out. Yeah. As a cop out to give up too early as a cop out to, um, to not dream big. And as a cop out to say, this isn't what God has planned for me. And, or, you know, maybe God doesn't plan for me to have it yet or whatever. But I think we use that as a cop out too often. I think it's still important to pray that, that we would be doing things that are inside of his will, but to have the mindset of not that, Oh, this is a cop out that I'm getting, giving myself because I really don't believe this is going to happen anyways. And I'll just chalk it up to, Oh, it wasn't God's will. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that's just, that's such a hard thing. It's such a hard fine line between making sure that we are praying that, Hey God, you know, really, if this really doesn't happen, then it is okay. Yeah. And, and I still have faith in you, but I believe that you've put this on my heart for a reason. I believe you've put this in my life for a reason. And I believe that you're going to bless me through it and you're going to help me to bless others through it. If it's your will. Exactly. And I, that's just so hard. It's a hard distinction to make. I think a lot of this is hard because he's not right there physically answering all of these questions for us. Mm -hmm. You know, it is for me like, Lord, I want to pray for this. And I want to be bold enough to know that, like you said, it's going to happen, but if not, I'm going to be okay with it. Um, but not to go ahead and doubt it right as I'm praying. Like, oh, well, I really don't think it's going to happen, but I figured I'd just say it and, you know, your will, you know, if it, if it is. But, I, think, I think too, Cassie, that when we seek God, then our desires and our dreams are going to align with what he wants. So it's not... You know, because we sit here and think, well, what, what do we need to circle, you know, in prayer? What dream do we need to circle in prayer? But I think we, what we need to do is ask God, what do you want? You know, where, you know, so basically when, you know, whenever we seek him, then our dreams are going to align with what we're going to ask the right questions and pray the right things. Yeah. And I think that's true. Like figuring out what our Jericho is, if we don't know it, like, yeah. Lord, what? What, what, what do I need to pray about right now? Like, what do I need to circle? Like, let, let God speak to you and the Holy Spirit and just help you figure it out that and walk you through it. Yeah, exactly. I could, I didn't explain that in the right words, but you said that. You know yeah. what I'm saying. Hey, I did something right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's true. Like, um, I totally understand what you're saying. I mean, goodness. Um, there's a lot of times that, you know, I don't know what's going on or, and, and, and God already knows. And sometimes I do those big prayers, but in a lot of the aspects, I know that he's, he's listening and he knows my heart, but I'm trying to get better, especially after reading this, being more specific in my prayers. And it talks about, I don't know where, I know I'll probably find it, but it talks about how when we feel like we have this really big prayer, our voc vocabulary gets really great. Like we pull out these huge words and we're like, maybe God's going to listen because my words are a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger. And um, I know I do that sometimes. Like, wow, I feel like I'm in grammar school and all these, you know, great words are coming out of my mouth. Maybe I took lots of edge and who knows, but Lord, I really hope you hear this one. And I feel like God's listening to all of it. I just have to realize like, no matter what words come out of my mouth, even if they're not eloquent or they're not great, he's still listening because he knows our heart and he knows where we're at. Um, and we just have to remember that, you know, we're not, everybody's different. And that's, that's what, that's why he made us. Um, on the bottom of 81, um, I think it was Cash or Carol, I can't remember, but um, it said they didn't always get what they wanted when they wanted. Sometimes it felt like God was taking his time, and he was, but God never misses his postmark. Hmm. 
And it says, is your, and I highlighted the rest of the, the end. It says, is your dream too big for you? It better be because that will force you to pray circles around it. If you keep circling it in prayer, God will get bigger and bigger until you see your impossible prayer for what, for what, it, it, for what it really is. An easy answer for an almighty God. Hmm. I mean, really? And it keeps getting better. Right. On part two in our 1230, um, one of, I think it was Marie, she on 85, she highlighted the common denominator in each of these stories is holy desperation. People took de uh, desperate measures to get to God and God honored them for it. Like, do we really, I think that that's another thing, like, when I really, when I really feel like a huge prayer or a huge thing is on my heart, do I really take desperate me measures or do I just pray and hope that things are really going to happen? You know, um, it, it, it's just, it's crazy how, how much this book is speaking to me. And I really hope it's doing the same to you guys because, Wow. If y'all have anything else, like there's, I mean, I highlighted a ton of this. Um, like the other on 84, it says, and if you don't pray like it depends on God, the biggest miracles and best promises will remain out of your prayer reach. But if you learn to pray hard, like the persistent widow, God will honor your bold prayers because your bold prayers honor God. And I highlighted that like, your bold prayers honor God. It's because it's been so hard for me to pray boldly. And it still is because I still feel selfish in some ways, but I have to remind myself like, but the, the things that I want are what he's wanting. Cause he wouldn't keep putting it in my lap if it wasn't. And I have to realize like the things that I want to do with this business and my, and my bold prayers are going to better his kingdom. And the fact that like Kasha, you know, helping people, that I've always wanted to and being able to financially do that and continue to do things like, you know, like I said, you know, being able to help somebody that had car issues or, um, you know, a single mom in need or just anything to that, to that, that I never ever dreamed of before that I'd be able to do. Um, yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Um, I like what it said on 85, too, about God couldn't care less about protocol. If he did, um, Jesus would have chose the Pharisees in, instead of his disciples. Um, just because, like, it, it's talking about prayer here and how we talked about, like, the vocabulary and stuff. It doesn't matter what you say. It matters what's in your heart and stuff. And I think that's really important to remember when we're, you know, concerned about what we say and how we say it. And even too, when we're praying aloud, like it doesn't necessarily matter because God doesn't care about protocol. And I just, I think that was a really important thing to highlight and star and draw arrows to. <laughs> right. For some reason, that's the one thing I did not highlight. And I think just because I was like, yeah, that's so good. Because I mean, it, ke it keeps going. It talks about how Jesus honored the prostitute who crashed the party at the Pharisee's home, like you said. And then Jesus honored the tax collector and it keeps going. And I'm like, yeah, he did. He did. And, oh, it's so true. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter um, what is happening in your life. He sees, he sees your heart and like here, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't care. He just wants you to honor him. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to go to eight because, y'all, we're running out on time. So on eight, on the bottom, I started, I highlighted it, um, 88, it says, we stop praying because we can't see any tangible difference with our natural eyes. We allow our circumstances to get between God and us instead of putting God between us and our circumstances. And then in the middle, it says, it's easy to give up on dreams, give up on miracles, give up on promises. We lose heart, lose patience, and lose faith. And like a slow leak, it often happens without us even knowing it until our prayer life gets a flat. And at the bottom, 
The reason many of us give up too soon is that we feel like we have failed if God doesn't answer our prayer. That isn't failure. The only way you can fail is if you stop praying. Like, I mean, really. Mm. What do y'all think about that? Any, any, any touches on that? Like to elaborate or anything that might come to you? Because... I mean, that whole page is stark. I mean, y'all can see, like, star, star. Well, didn't the author tell us that it took him, like, uh, it was, like, seven years before, or was it eight years before they got that coffee house started? Yeah, I think so. And I think he it's he circled it in six, for 16 years or something, crazy, like, it was a long. A crazy amount. And I'm thinking to myself, in seven years, man, I would have already decided that that must have not been your will. So I quit praying about that five years ago. Yeah. Know? I would have uh, quit, quit praying of it in a week. I mean, to, let's be honest. Like, if I don't mm -hmm. get an answer, like, I feel like I don't get an answer in a week, you know, or even just a day sometimes. Like, oh, okay. You know? Yeah, but I think one of the guys that was talking about, and I think that um, I that Renee mentioned earlier about the guy that had applied for the job for so many years, I think that it had mentioned, or it was either his story or another story, that one of them had mentioned that they still felt the spirit um, speaking to them about that. And so that might be something that, you know, we just have to um, make sure that we're listening to the Holy Spirit, you know, nudging us on that to continue to pray for that. So, because again, like she said, I would have already gone to another job by that time. I would have decided that wasn't for me, but I guess he kept feeling, you know, the Holy Spirit telling him, no, this is the job you need. So. Yeah. And I think that's the difference is actually listening, you know, mm -hmm. and, and hearing mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And the next part in the book, it says live unoffended. We do so many times get offended when we're like, fine. Well, I thought you brought this into my life because you wanted me to have it. And now you're just taking it away from me. Fine. Then I'm watching all these other people get what they want and I'm over here struggling and you're not providing for me. So, you know, I mean, we, we do do that even though we don't like, we say, Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We do sort of get offended because he's not talking to us or not answering us yet or right now or today. And we're watching, you know, we're comparing ourselves to other people and that is not what we're supposed to be doing anyway. So. Oh, I, I started and highlighted that too, because even in my journey, when I first started, um, I was comparing myself to another person that, I mean, she was hitting silver and she hit gold. I mean, she was flying. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? How is she being blessed? But I'm not like, what, mm -hmm. you know, me, 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 me. And I just had to realize like, you know, in all of this, like, it's just, it's, it's, it's his path for me. And I mean, just like with Sarah Marble, you know, her, she took, she took a long time. And I think that that's the beauty of this is we're all going to have Sarah Marbles and some, there might be somebody that it takes two years to go silver and that her story is going to be huge because then we can help other people with those stories because we're like you know what but she hit it she didn't stop you know just like that guy with that job he didn't stop because he didn't get that first year he kept going every year and kept trying and trying and i think that we have to have faith like a child like where did all of our dreams stop when we were a kid why did they have to stop there why can't we dream like a child again and i have to put myself in a child's foot like feet sometimes because like I had these huge dreams that I was going to be this great artist and have lots of money and all this crazy stuff and I stopped it because when you become an adult you just I don't know why you put a period on God's comma and you, you just don't think that um I don't know you're big enough for it you can't fit those shoes um and again this is me I'm talking about so oh okay well and that's like here um on the next page where he talks about Lazarus like yeah. somebody died like that I mean to me that's a period and she's like even now God please I'm like he's dead right like I think that's a period you know like but she, she just that little phrase even now when it seems like it's four days late even now when you just know that's the end she still had that faith so that is incredible yeah.
And I, it makes me wonder, like, was the Holy Spirit just still pushing her? And she actually listened. Right. Because for us, I mean, if I'm dead, I'm dead. I mean, right. that's how we think. Like, we're gone. We're done. There's that's a period the there. <laughs> um, but, I mean, if you think about it, how many stories have we seen on online or on the news where, like, a child is dead for several hours and then they find her breathing again? I mean, mm -hmm. it can happen. We just have to stop putting a period where God still might have a comma. We just have to just have a little bit more faith in it. Right. Um, I highlighted that like crazy too, because I, I, it makes me want to have more faith like that, like her, you know? Um, and how do you do it without feeling like you're crazy? You know, cause even if you're like, no, please, it's only been two days. Like people are like, come on, it's time to leave the hospital, you know? Yeah. But I think that that's another thing we have to realize, like, um, and again, me again, and I'll go to my little crazy circumstance soon, but we have to realize, like, we might look foolish to other people, but we're not foolish in his eyes. And I mean, the other day we had pajama day and I brought extra clothes because I didn't want to be foolish going all of us and the kids in our, I, I mean, I had my purple robe and some of y'all know I love my purple robe. And I had that on and I was like, I can't wear this into the gas station to go get them donuts because they were really good. And I was going to get them a donut. So I changed, I put a different shirt on because I didn't want to be foolish. But then it made me think about the guy that, you know, he talks about how, how foolish he looked, you know, circling, um, that area that he was going to have his church. I mean, could you, I mean, I would have probably called the cops on him and be like, what's this crazy person doing? You know, circling this thing every day and not realizing what, what truly his passion and, and will was. Um, and that's, I think that's what is wrong, especially with me. Like we're so quick to like judge, you know, in a way that it's sad. Um, but in the society too, we almost have to, because our society is crumbling that we have to almost have an awareness of like what's good and, and what we have to be careful of. So it's, it's, it's a hot mess. We have to just keep balancing. Um, um, I mean, I like these questions, but I really like what we're doing right now. So what do y'all think? Just keep going with these or keep going. Okay. Um, okay. On the bottom of 90, it says, have you ever felt like God was doing miracles for everyone? And you see, we said this earlier, um, for everyone and their brother but you seem to be the odd man out. It seems like God is keeping his promises to everyone but you. And it, like you said, Renee, you know, um, we try to live our lives unoffended by God. Uh, Jesus promises um, that, that we will be blessed if we aren't offended. Um, and then at the bottom, again, the comma one, it says never put a comma where God puts a period and never put a period where God puts a comma. Sometimes what we perceive as a period is really just a comma. We think that God's silence is the end of a sentence, but it's just a, I can't say that word right now. Somebody help me. Anybody? It's a pause. I just paused. Ellipsis. Huh? Ellipsis? No, uh, Preven. Oh, I was thinking the dot, dot, dot. Oh, no. It's all right. Providential. Thank you. I'm in a different spot. <laughs> nope, you're okay. On the 91, the bottom, it says praying through is the conjunction that allows God to not just finish the sentence, but to make a statement. Okay. Mm. Um, and then we talked about Lazarus, and it says, I starred this one, and maybe you did too, Ashley. It says in the middle, it's faith that believes it's not over until God says it's over. I mean, I highlighted that it's right in the middle um of 92 um one thing that i pray for a lot um kind of having to do with the whole it's not over till god says it's over i pray for clarity that he would make it very clear um when he wants a door to be closed or when he wants a door to be opened that that i'm not second guessing myself and him that I'm not second guessing. Well, is this really what you want me to do? I pray that he makes it clear. Yeah. And I think that that's, I mean, that's a huge 
in our prayer life because that's what gets us bogged down so much is the not knowing. And I think again, because we're, we're in, in our society, we're so quick to know. Um, so it's hard to just to, to wait for what he has for us. Um, okay. On the um, bottom of 96, I highlighted um, the Bible wasn't meant to be read through. The Bible was meant to be prayed through. And I struggle with that because um, I think that, and this was somewhere else I highlighted too, that when I struggle, I don't, I always go to him. I don't, I don't go to the Bible as much as probably what I should do. Um, and I, I need to pray more through my Bible because obviously it's his word. He, he gave it to us for a reason. We can continue, continue to keep going to him, but we have this great thing right in front of us that I don't, I personally don't use enough of. And that spoke to me. Like, I really need to pray through, you know, the Bible. I mean, the Bible's here, you know, it's meant to be here. And when we started this book right away, like I started trying to find the promises in scripture. And then when we got to this chapter, I was like, oh my gosh, that's what I'm supposed to be using those for. <laughs> okay. That's helpful. Because there are so many promises that we are allowed to lean on. We are allowed to bring up. We are allowed to say, you promised that, you know, this would happen if, you know, I was faithful or whatever. So, um, so, and I guess uh, maybe it was in this book or I don't know, I'm reading another book too. I think they said there's something of like a 12, 1200 promises or something in the Bible throughout the Bible. So like I started reading um, our our pastor gave us a challenge to read through the book of John this um, week until we get to church on Sunday. And I'm up through about chapter six and I started thinking, Oh my gosh, that's a promise. Oh my gosh, that's a promise. So, you know, just the stuff that we like, we're definitely not into the Bible enough. I know I'm not, but I have been the last couple of days and it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool because he is like, I never thought it really meant anything to me. I don't like history. I don't like, learning other people's history. I don't like reading stories about other people, you know, true or not. I don't care. <laughs> but, um, but when it was like, I found a promise, I was like, Oh my God, he's talking to me. <laughs> yeah. Where see, that's, what's great. Cause I, I love exactly what you said. You don't. So it's, it's funny how God makes us so different because we, cause he helps us fill in the gaps, you know, where other people aren't, you know, good at. And you know, like with you, I definitely want to, I want to be more in the Bible and I want to, I mean, if I, if I'm pushing myself to do this, I need to be pushing myself to do the other two. Um, and I, that was like a huge moment for me yesterday and really now, like I've spent so much time in really pushing myself to read and finding those quiet moments that I really need to do that, you know, with, with my Bible more and being intentional on it and not pressing snooze because I want five more minutes of sleep. I mean, um, okay. Uh, let's get through nine really quick. Just real fast. Nine and 10. I will open it up to you guys. Was there anything that stood out in chapter nine that you, it just was huge for you guys? And if not, I will bring up one that we talked about at 1230 that was huge for them. So I don't know if any of the rest of you are doing this, but um, I have been, I, I bought the audio book and so I've just been listening to it in my car. And so I don't really know where the chapters begin and end. It all just kind of runs together because <laughs> it doesn't really announce chapters in the audio version. So anyways, I'm kind of like, I don't remember what chapter nine specifically was. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're fine. That's kind of like the other book study I'm doing right now where I, I actually bought the book so I can go back and as I'm reading, I want to go back and highlight those things um, because it's hard for me to do two book studies right now. And so I'm listening to the other one. So I understand. Um, but so I, I will touch on one and maybe you can remember listening to this. But we talked about on 100, 
it says at the bottom, do you have a favorite place to pray? A place where you are, where you get better reception, a place where you, where your mind is more focused and a place where you have more faith. And this was amazing that we talked about um, earlier today. So I cannot wait to hear like, do you guys have a, a, a place where you pray, where you feel like you get the best reception, the best peace, the best everything that is just like your, your place? Anybody? Or do you not have one and you want one? You know, like share. I don't really have have one that I can think of, but the the time that I pray the most is whenever I'm on my um, way to work, and I'm there's this like ten mile stretch of road because I live way out in the middle of nowhere, and my work is way out in the middle of nowhere. Um, that there's no cell phone reception. There's no radio reception. There is nothing out there for me to do except talk to God. And it's so nice. It's frustrating when you're on the phone and it drops off, but it's so nice. That's awesome. That's what I was going to say too. We live out in the country, so it's like a 20 minute drive to town. And uh, so that's just the best place to, you know, focus on that and not get so sidetracked. But also um, the prayer journal, I know we talked about this last week. That is, for me, is so much easier because I don't find myself drifting off to, oh, I've got to wash the dishes later. Oh, I need to go change the laundry around. I can sit there and write and concentrate on what I'm writing and write everything that you know, is on my heart at that time. So those are just the easiest, easiest ways. I always thought it would be cool to have a prayer room, like in, in war room, yeah. but I've never really, <laughs> I haven't gotten that far yet. Anybody else? Looks like Ashley Breeden, you're trying to talk. Breeden, did I say that right? No. <laughs> She's like, no, 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 no. That is too funny. Girl, you're going to be talking on my calls. I'm just saying, I might call you out again. <laughs> um, okay. Anybody else have a really cool spot that is like yours, you know, like you get the most peace when you're there. In the shower. <laughs> hey. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's usually the only place nobody needs something from me. <laughs> mine still are knocking at the door. It's not, that's not my, not, not mine. Like, mom, can I have Nutella and a banana? Or mom, can I have cereal? Like, um, right. I'm like, when is somebody, I still have a little one hanging on to the edge of the tub screaming at me when I'm in the shower. I'm like, yep. that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I will share mine. Mine is, so we live out in the country too. We live on eight acres and mine lately is I love, um, going out in the woods and just having that peace. Like nothing is around you, but what he made. And I get the best reception there. I feel like I'm the closest to him. I have nothing else bothering me. And I try like intentionally not letting my kids know where I'm at. I tell my husband, like, watch the kids. I'm going to go for a minute. And that's where I feel at peace when I'm actually just, I'm praying and I have nothing else that is distracting me. You know, like you said, Carol, like you're not wondering whatever, what all the other things you're, you need to get done. I feel like that is my place. And I want, I would love to make a place in my house, but honestly my house is chaos and it's really hard to like find that quiet spot. I mean, you saw me in my car cause I like told, didn't tell my kids where I was <laughs> and they found me later, but I, you have, I have to find that. And the only spot for that is out in my eight acres. And I talked about today, unfortunately, I don't really want to do that right now because the ticks are like crazy right now. And I mean, seed tick central is out in my backyard and my reception is not the best right now with him, but I have a really cool deck and I'm praying that I do more time with him there and just like look on. Um, so that's been my thing lately is just trying to find that time to really not press snooze and wake up just a few minutes more early, a few minutes earlier and, and do that. Um, okay. Anything else? Because that I had, that was our favorite topic 
today, I think, with just talking about where we pray. Um, I had a huge, like, aha moment in Chapter 9 just because um, I'm reading uh, The Secret Code of Success, too, so I don't know if y'all read that. But um, when he was talking about the words on his kid's wall or, like, putting all the words up, like, I had just finished, we just finished Chapter 4 and 5 in Secret Code talking about, like, your negative self and your authentic self. And I was like, oh, my gosh, he's putting these authentic self words like, on his kid's wall. And so I wrote that, and then we had one part in the chapter of Secret Code, it talks about, like, the signs that have been put on you, like, negative signs, like, like you're no good, or you can't do it, stuff like that. And, like, he's putting positive signs all over his kids, like, these, like, affirmative words and stuff. And I just, that was such an aha moment, like, these books are connecting, and so it's kind of cool to read them at the same time. There's actually several places where they kind of overlap, but that one was like a really big one. So I thought that was really cool. That is awesome. I think that that happens at me at church too. You know, when, when our preachers preach and I'm like, oh, that's just like my business. That's just like with Lexus, like everything, like it's crazy how some sermons even just correlate with what we do here and, and how much I want to share it with my team too. And so when you find those correlations, it's, it's definitely like an aha moment. And those are, those are the best. Um, anybody else have aha moments? Like that just stood out to you. Let's see. I highlighted a lot on 102 at the bottom and it just pretty much is like praying hard is standing on his promises of God. And all I could think about was we sing a song like that. So that I, I highlighted that and, um, and I highlighted towards the bottom, there is nothing God wants uh, to do more than prove his power by keeping his promises. Um, I also like the fact where it said, God is hunting you down to bless you. Um, okay, let's finish. Cassie, on page um, 104. Yes. I love the part where it said that parents are prophets to their children, and part of the prophetic role is knowing the scriptures and knowing our children well enough to know what promises they need to circle. I think that's um, very fitting because, you know, we always pray for our parents uh, or pray for our children as parents, but I remember um, my my two girls are grown now, but when they first left the house, they were in one of them married someone in the Marines. And then also my other daughter was in the Air Force and um, it took them a far away from home. And of course, you know, I'm a hovering mother anyway and worry all the time about them. But um, they would call from time to time with some kind of problem. Mom, just falling. And I'm like you're 3000 miles away from me and you're calling to tell me this. I can't do anything about you. One of them at one time was even in Hawaii. And so it was, you know, I'm like, I'd rather just not know if I can't do anything about it. But you know what I found was at those times, as soon as I got off the phone with them, I just immediately hit my knees and I just said, God, I can't be there, be there in my place and, you know, comfort them, whatever their need is, you know, or whatever the situation was. And every single time, uh, and of course, that's not the only time I prayed for them. You know, it was just daily that I did. But, but every single time after their their crisis ended, you know, and they were calm and they called me later, and it was like they said, "Mom, I don't understand." But as soon as I got off the phone, I there was just like a peace about me, like you were right there with me, you know. And I'm just like, it wasn't me, honey. It was God. <laughs> it's just amazing. It is. And, and it's, he's, he knows exactly what we need at the right time, like, mm -hmm. and how to push us you yeah. know, to come to him more. I, I think it was more for me than for them because, you know, their crisis was going to end soon, whatever the situation was. But, you know, for me being so far away, nothing I can do. I mean, you know how it is as a mom. Yeah. Well, and I think that he was trying to get us, I mean, and I'm saying us cause it happens to me too, like to really put, everything in his hands. Like, all right, God, I can't, I, can't, I seriously can't help them unless I'm on a 24 hour flight, you know, to get there. 
you know, you're going to have to intercede and help. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm here to help, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm here to give it all to you. And uh, I think, I think it even mentioned that in the book that, you know, he hears the prayers that we can, that we know we can't do anything about. Yep. So. Yep. There's a lot in this book. Like there really, really is. Um, like on 106 at the bottom, it says the hard thing about praying hard is letting God do all the heavy lifting. You have to trust the favor of God and do and or the favor of God to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. You have to trust God to change hearts, even the heart of Pharaoh. Well, it's, but like it's like Carol, right? I mean, that's exactly what you just talked about. Like he you were giving it to him so he could do the heavy lifting because you couldn't, you know. Mm -hmm and and letting that go and it's sometimes so hard to let go but once you do it's just like this weight is just gone um i liked on 108 at the bottom it said it taught us um how to pray like it depends on god and work like it depends on us Well, I don't want to keep y'all too much longer, but was there anything else that like a nine and 10? And I really like in the chat that y'all are even talking about how the, your church is correlating with exactly the same, you know, with this book. And I think that, um, I love that, that how that happens, you know, and a lot of sermons happen with me that way too. Like, I'm like, we just talked about this or me and Jana will just talk about something and we're like, we'll look at each other in church and we're like, did you just hear that? And it's just, it's crazy how they correlate. Um, but was there anything else that like stood out to you? Um, and then we can just continue to talk in our group too uh, about chapter 10 um, on our page and kind of touch, touch bases there too. There's a lot of highlighted in 10. So I could be on here another 30 minutes and I don't want to keep you another 30 minutes. Well, I'd like to kind of hear some of the things that you've highlighted because now I'm thinking I just need to go ahead and I've been doing the audio. I need to go ahead and get the book so that I can do this highlighting that y'all are talking about because I'm yeah. missing it. You know, yeah. I hear it and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's great. And then I can't go back and look at it mm -hmm. or even find it. It's so hard, you know, and I, I, I am, it. you do, you do. And I, here's why, if you're like me, I'm a pen to paper. Like I have to have things printed out. I need to write, yeah. them. I have to see it. And I don't like, you know, people have their calendar on their phone. I don't like that. I like being able to see it. Um, people do that. And so that's why for me, like, I have to see the words, you know, I can mm -hmm. hear it. And I'm like, I'm the same with you. Like, wow, that's so good. And then I forget. Like, it's just, it's yeah. like, yeah, my mind wonders. And I'm like, that was so good, but crap. How do I go back? Like, yeah, go back. And I try to go back 30 seconds and I'm like, no, yes, I'm the same way. Or I try to type it like on my phone. Cause I'm listening in the car while my husband's driving. I'm cause I'm listening to the other audio book. And I'm like, what did that say again? Because autocorrect totally ru ruined that. And it did not work. <laughs> um, so that's why I ordered, so we're doing, I'm doing the five levels of leadership with Jessica Hefley and some other um, people. And that one is really good too. And, but it's one that I, again, I just bought the book because I'm going to have to go back and highlight. So I'll tell you my favorites. Okay. Um, and I'll just, I'll be quick. Um, da -da -da. This one right here, I think it's true with everything. God always gives you another chance to get back in the game. Like, don't give up. Like there's always more chances and, and to do exactly what he's called you to do. And that was on 111. Um, the other thing that I highlighted a lot of, but like the one main sentence was on 112 and it said, but God wants us to drop to our knees every day. And I need to do better at that. I'm like so much better at that. Um, and then this one, 113 on the top, it said, God, God will keep putting you in situations that stretch your faith. And as your faith stretches, so do your dreams. And da -da -da, in the middle, blessings will complicate your life, but they will compl or, mm, 
complicate your life in ways God wants to com- wants it complicated. Um, and I think that's true because sometimes we see blessing, we see things that we're like, wow, how can I do all of that? And, and in the end, it's, it's a huge blessing. Like he, it, he puts it in our path for a reason, even though we might see it as like, how can I add one more thing to my plate? Um, so I highlighted that one. Um, one fourteen in the middle. The reason God doesn't answer our prayers isn't that we aren't praying hard enough. The reason more often than, than not is that we aren't willing to do work hard enough or to, we aren't willing to work hard enough. Um, and I, we talked about that earlier. Like we, we, we stop, you know, we stop exactly what we, you know, where we're at. We're like, all right, well, God, I guess that wasn't, that wasn't meant to be. And we, we put that period where, you know, we weren't willing to work hard enough for it, you know, and, and maybe that miracle was coming around the corner, but we stopped. Um, I do that a lot where you pray and then you think it's a period. (laughs) And so I guess I need to like pray for more clarity to know that difference. Cause I struggle knowing the difference when time has passed and I'm like, Ooh, I guess that's a no. (laughs) Yeah. So I think that's one big thing for me. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's huge for me is to realize like I need to pray longer, not just one day and be done. Like, okay, God, I prayed it. I'll just, I'll, I'll wait to see if you answer it, you know? Yeah. And, and I then, always say, and if it's your will, but if not, see, I'm not the only one. Why do we, no, I, I totally do it. I totally yeah. do it. I do too. And, and, and then when I don't get a reply, I'm like, okay, clearly it wasn't your will. <laughs> right. Right. Cause clearly I shouldn't have those things or I shouldn't. Yeah. You know, it's been a week. It's not your will. <laughs> it's been 24 hours. Let's be honest. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, it's so bad. But like, for instance, like J- me and my husband always dreamed about living on acreage and having a beautiful home that overlooks like we were tucked in the woods. And I mean, we dreamed that right when we got married. And it wasn't even that I really prayed about it. It was more of just dreaming about it. Here, 14 years later, here we are, you know, and it wasn't something I never really thought could truly happen. We just thought when we're retired and when we're old and all of that, we'll have that. And it's just, it's crazy that you know, even though I didn't really pray for it, God still answered it. Um, but, okay. Dun, dun, dun. Ah, kind of what we're talking about right here. So 118. Um, in the middle-ish, it says, and that's where many of us spend our lives. We're so close to the dream, so close to the promise, so close to the miracle, but we aren't willing to get our feet wet. We're waiting for God to make a move while God is waiting for us to make a move. Hmm. He's just waiting. Like he's waiting for us to not wait 24 hours. He's waiting to see if we have a little bit longer in us and waiting us for, to pray harder and to pray more. Um, that's really like the, the big things I highlighted in 10 that were like, that just stood out to me. So if something else stood out to y'all, please share because I love my, this pen and I love to highlight. So anything else or what, I mean, out of these chapters, was there anything else that stood out to you that was just an aha moment for you. You're, you're just realizing that, you know what, God's speaking to me in this, and this is what I'm going to start doing now or trying to be better at. Now that I'm like looking back at it, something that stood out to me on 120 is um, talking about Peter and going and getting the fish with the coin in the mouth, just talking about like, that was his expertise. Like he didn't, you know, I don't need God's help. I'm an expert at this. Like how often do we just get a big head about stuff? Like, I don't need God's help with that. Like, I know how to do this. I I was with my cousin the other day and she has a four year old who's starting school. And he says he doesn't need to go to school because he learned everything when he was in her belly. So he knows everything. So I mean, how often do we do that though? Like, Oh, I already know everything. Like I learned everything already so like it just going back and looking at that like that's so that's so us we have that mindset we say that to God all the time like I already know that so that was yeah 
That's so good. And I think that, I mean, we all can fall into that. Um, and now we're like, well, I'm really good at, you know, helping people. So I don't need God's help in me helping people, you know, or things like that. We, it's, it's, it's so true. And, and the, the, the words of a child, I mean, oh my goodness, I love the words of a child. And if y'all aren't writing stuff down, I highly recommend, and I've been really bad about it, but I created emails for my girls when they were little. And I, anytime they said something funny or quirky like that, I would email it to them or send them pictures or something like that. Cause I mean, those you forget, you know, and it's just gone in an instant. Ugh. We also talked about at our 1230. I highly recommend reaching out to your sponsor because he talks about, you know, making a plan, but making it a God, a God plan and making sure you're praying around your, you know, your pray storm. Um, it talks about um, what's your week, your month and your year look like, like what, what's your dreams. I highly recommend you guys reaching out to your sponsors and saying, Hey, this is cause they might not know. And like what you're really wanting in this and what, what you um, are dreaming about and praying about um, so that they can pray for you too. And I would love to know them. That was the other thing that we did this morning because we were such a, 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 lot, a lot smaller group. I wrote down, you know, their, their, their dreams for the week, month, and year. And, um, and I think that's huge. So reach out to your sponsor and figure out, like, what do you want next week to look like? And it doesn't have to be just at Flexus. It can be in this, too, in this book. Like, what do you want to be, what do you want to do differently in a week? What do you want differently in a month? And then it, what's different in a year? And I recommend you guys, that's a little homework for you guys. Reach out to your sponsor and do that. Um, but if there's nothing else, I'm so glad you guys stuck out a, an hour and 24 minutes. You guys are awesome. And um, I cannot wait until next week because I know it's just going to keep getting better and better. And um, I hope you guys are loving it too. But I will go. And you guys have an awesome night. Get some sleep and get a good prayer in. <laughs> All right, guys. I will talk to you later. Bye. Bye.